Hi, I'm Pete and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. Well, the seasons, they are a changing. And our work on the farm is changing dramatically as we head toward the colder weather. Last week we brought the laying hens in from the field into their winter house and now everything's gone out of the field. The cows have been brought in, the hens are in their winter house, the turkeys are gone. The only thing we have left in the field are uh, our field pigs and the first batch of them is going in two weeks. So we're really settling into winter mode and winter mode brings us to a more thoughtful time in the farm. And this being a Sunday video, I thought it'd be good to cover something that I haven't seen anybody talk about on YouTube before that I think everybody will be kind of interested in. <coughs> Cattle are never happy. <laughs> this medium that you and I are on YouTube, in my mind, in its best form, is about telling stories. All the best channels, if you break down their videos, about telling a story and wanting people to come on board that story. You have that story. You have characters, you have plots, and when a character leaves, that character could be an old tractor or an animal. People lament that loss, and we share together the triumphs and the mishaps and the tragedies of the particular story that we're following. When I started out making videos, like most people, I really didn't know what I was doing. But I didn't realize how much people want to be a part of that story. And at its heart, they want to give back and share their stories as well. There's an old saying that whenever somebody dies, a library burns. And I believe that everybody has such amazing perspective and stories in their life especially by the time they've accumulated six, seven, eight decades of life, that it's a shame that, that that knowledge and experience gets lost. So back to me starting the channel. This channel's always attracted really four main groups, I think. There's the initial group that I expected, which was people beginning homesteading and small farming that wanted to see how other people do it and maybe learn something from how other people do it. The second group, and probably the last three, well, the last two I'd never expect. The second group are, at, are what I call agritourists. They're people that are not farmers who will probably never farm, but have fallen in love with the story of farming, of growing food and the trials and the successes of that. And I always expected to attract those two groups. So the third and fourth group, I guess I didn't expect to attract. I hope to attract the third group in the beginning of the channel. And those are the gearheads. I always wanted to do some mechanical videos because I enjoy old equipment and I always wanted to share that on the channel. So there's that group. And then the fourth group, which I never expected, are people that lived a life like my family does and are now older. So they grew up on farms in the 50s, the 60s that functioned a lot like ours do. And they watch this channel and they reminisce about their childhood and they look fondly back on it. The product of all four of these groups coming together on this channel, to me, are the stories that they tell. And since I started this channel, it's been a little over two years now, I've received probably a thousand of those stories. I get them on all kinds of forms of communication and people will tell me something that struck a chord with them in some video. It's probably, and it could be something I never intended to <laughs> have people get in touch with or connect with, but it happened. And they'll write me a letter about it. And that letter usually will contain their life story. What's amazing to me is the commonality of the letters. They could be from halfway around the world. They could be from the very state that I'm in. They could be from somebody that's 80 years old, somebody that is just starting out 25 years old, even, even some kids, 10 years old, about wanting to share a desire and a story that they've had in life where they overcame a struggle and achieved what they wanted to do most of these stories look backwards. It's somebody that's 
in retirement and boy these cows <laughs> somebody that's in retirement and I guess they want to share back with me what they have seen in their lifetime so I've accumulated all these stories and like I said there's probably a thousand of them in fact I just got one the other day and some of them stick in my mind I got a, a short note from an older gentleman who said that my grandfather worked at the Farmall plant when the F-20 was made. And the F-20 was made from, well, mostly through the 1930s. And he said every tractor that my grandfather worked on, I guess he assembled engine blocks. He put a stamp with his initials on the engine block. So he said, I want to pass this on before I pass on. And let, you, and let that memory live on. That's an incredible responsibility for me. And it, it brings up the responsibility of all of this storytelling that, like it or not, and I, I do like it, but, and I think I share this with other YouTube um, content creators, we become a kind of a repository or a collector of all these individual stories that identify with what we're doing in one way or another. Now the question, that's been on my mind a lot lately is what do you do with these? What do you do anything with these stories? Like my library analogy, you know, it, 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 I think it's important to pass on experience so that it's not forgotten. And having so much of that coming to me is a bit uncomfortable because I I welcome it but at the same time feeling like you have to do something with it is a little bit daunting it's like you know you'd like to put it in a book but there's never enough there in the stories to, to, to sort of make a chapter in a book it's just how their story relates to you anyway that's one repercussion of of this collecting the other repercussion is, in a sense, you become a focal point for the emotions going on in the world. And um, that's another thing that I think YouTube creators don't know what to do with. Lately, I've seen a whole bunch of different channels talk about some of the negative feedback they're getting from the world coming into their channels. If you're sympathetic to what's going on in the world, sympathetic in a way that you're empathetic, I guess, where you feel what's going on around you and the prevailing emotion, that can be a hard thing to cleanse yourself of. So the overwhelming majority of that emotion I have coming to me is very positive and uplifting. And it's, it's, sometimes it's almost like a high where you want to create more and you can't sleep because you know people are depending on you. You've done something for them. You want to do more for them. You want to spread more good feelings into the world. The opposite side of that coin is a whole lot of anger gets directed towards you as well. And I'm not, I'm not asking for sympathy. This just happens. It happens to everybody that's making content on YouTube. You absorb some of that anger, just, as, just like you absorb all of the well wishes you get. And to be a successful creator in the long term, I think that we all need to find a way to deal with that, to kind of not wash ourselves of it, but put it in a place, kind of like a, a counselor or a therapist does at the end of the day when they hear about all of people's problem, problems that they're trying to help they all have cleansing rituals so that they can sort of not compartmentalize that but kind of put it aside these are things I don't know the answer to they're things that I'm thinking about I, I but in this video if if I have you take one thing away from this I want you to remember that YouTube is a really powerful storytelling medium much more so than any other form of social media because you've got video and you've got sound and you've got feeling coming across in the clearest way better than any written word does and that there's emotion tied into those stories that bring us all together I think that's really important today 
you can see me as kind of a regular guy, you know? I, I go out, I do lots of different things, and you can see how I react to them. And seeing people as people, even though a lot more people see me than, you know, say, <laughs> Joe Blow that lives down the road, is really important because it's another perspective that help, helps you identify, helps anybody identify with that person-to-person -person relationship, which I've said so many times, is so much more important than any relationship you can make via the written word on other forms of social media. Anyway, that's my long ramble for today. Um, I hope you have a great Sunday. It's a beautiful day here, cold, but it's just something to think about, you know? And uh, when you watch other videos, start to recognize the story and the characters and where you're invested in that story. And that's what the creators need to focus on. You know, what, what do the viewers care about? <laughs> My long ramble's over. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Oh, and I'm going to leave you with some peaceful shots of the animals doing their thing. We all deserve some peace on a Sunday.